From 1975 to 1990, thousands of people died during the Lebanese Civil War. Fifty thousands of those were killed in towns, cities, and villages. Then we have 17,000 others, the missing, those who are still being looked for today. Their families want the remains of their loved ones returned to them, those they shared good and bad moments with. But is it really possible to identify the remains of their loved ones among 17 thousands of skeletons. This is where forensic anthropology comes into play and can attempt to put forward a comforting side to a tragic story. The key aspect of forensic anthropology is the identification of unknown individuals. And of course, the very first step in doing so is to estimate their sex. I want you now to think about the key physical differences between men and women. I know what you are thinking now, and that is correct. But just imagine if there was no skin or soft tissue presence. What could we do? There are still some methods that can be used for sex estimation of the skeletons based on the morphological features of the skull and pelvis. But the only problem here is that, as the organic matter, bones do not survive in poor conditions. So we need to look for a harder element in human body. But what is harder than bone? The enamel that covers our teeth is the hardest and most highly mineralized element in human body. And teeth are often preserved, even when the bones are not. You brush your teeth every day. You look at your teeth in the mirror. But have you ever thought that this tiny white element in your mouth can provide us with valuable information about your age at death, your health and diet, your identity, your ethnicity, your biological relationships, your ancestry, and they can also provide an estimation of your sex. In general, males have larger teeth than females, and it could be because of the longer period of tooth formation in males. The other possibility could be the sex chromosomes. As you know, women have two X chromosomes, and men have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. It has shown that the effect of the Y chromosome in tooth growth is greater than that of the X chromosome. And this may cause larger tooth size in males. We can get a pretty good idea about the differences between men and women teeth by comparing their cervical measurements. That is the diameter of the tooth, where the crown, which is actually the white part of your tooth, joins the root. That is the part inside your gums. This difference could be less than one millimeter and can vary from between 10 to 100 micrometers. Now the question is, can we really use such a tiny difference for sex estimation in human populations? In my research, I've investigated this question by developing a brand new and highly accurate technique that allows me to combine 2D, 3D, and volumetric measurements of the tooth for sex estimation. In my research, I used CT scans of more than 2,000 teeth from around 170 male and female individuals to create a separate 3D model of every single tooth. 
These models allow me to take both 2D and 3D measurements of the crown itself, and they also allow me to take the measurements of those parts of the teeth which are hidden in the jaw, such as the volume of the tooth root. In total, I recorded more than 10,000 measurements. And by using the statistical analysis of this data, I came up with a set of equations that distinguish between males and females. My research showed that male teeth are on average 0.15 millimeters larger than female teeth. And this tiny difference helped me to sex more than 90% of individuals correctly. This new technique is faster, more accurate, and quite non-invasive in comparison with traditional techniques, such as dental caliper. And it can also be very helpful for the identification of the bad, badly decomposed bodies and disaster victims because just by having the tooth root, we can still estimate the sex of the individuals and therefore helping identify them and maybe giving some comfort to their families. This is also important considering that a large number of forensic cases remain unsolved simply because we cannot estimate the sex of the individuals. This is always the first step in developing the biological profile of unidentified bodies. And so without it, we cannot proceed further in identifications. These methods also, of course, have many applications in the field of archaeology. Forensic studies of sex estimation using novel and alternative methods like tooth measurements, make a vital contribution to a field that will always be necessary and provide crucial help in the aftermath of mass disasters, homicides, and accidents. What we all, as the researchers in the field, are trying to do is to bring just a little bit of comfort to the victim's family so that they might be able to cope with such disasters a little bit more easily. At the end, as Baron Georges Cuvier, the famous French naturalist said, show me your teeth and I will tell you who you are. Thank you. <laughs>